sisters here at Florabama today. Justice, God. You use the weak to lead the strong. You lead us in the song of your salvation. And all your people sing along. So remember your people. Remember your children. Remember your promise, O oh God. Oh, your grace is enough. Your grace is enough. Your grace is enough for me. Your grace is enough. Oh, your grace is enough. Your grace is enough for me. All right, she may be seated. This next song is called Trading My Sorrows, number 47.
singing yes lord yes lord yes yes lord yes lord yes lord yes yes lord yes lord yes lord yes yes lord amen But not cursed, I'm persecuted, but not abandoned. Struck down, but not destroyed. I'm blessed beyond the curse, for his promise will endure. And his joy is gonna be my strength. Though the sorrow may last all night, joy comes in the morning. I'm trading my sorrows. I'm trading my shame. Jesus, thank you for letting us worship here today here, God. And I just pray that, that you be with everyone here and give them a very Merry Christmas, Lord. Help all of us that, that are struggling and searching for you, God. I pray that you just touch their hearts and bring them on in home, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Jordan's going to help us out with a Christmas song. It's in your bulletin.
Gianni. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Jordan. Always a treat when Jordan comes down from uh, Helena, my old hometown where I moved from when I came here. Hey, um, I want to welcome everybody. I'm John Mason Smith. I'm with Remote Ministry. How many, uh, how many people are here for the very first time? Not at the floor band, because I know you were here already. <laughs> But, I mean, for church. Just stick your hands up. All right. All right. There you go. Thank you. Thank you all for coming. I hope you feel welcome here today. We have a lot of people here who come here all the time, and, and their job is to make sure you feel welcome. And I know that they're going to do it, because that's the way they are. Hey, folks. I'm John Mason Smith, the remote ministry team here at the Church at the Floribama. Thanks for coming by tuning in. Hey, we're going to uh, give you an opportunity to give back to our ministry online. Even though you're not here, you can still really help us reach people for Jesus and help them follow Him. And the way you do that is you go to our website at centralonline.tv, click the Give button, and then choose the Florida, Florida campus. And that money does come back to us, and then we'll use that to fish for people. You can also help by going to the floribama.com website, and there, choose Store. And then find them their shirts. He's cool. My church is at the Floribama shirt. And if you're like in Wisconsin or you're down in Miami, you need to wear this shirt everywhere you go and tell people, come check out this church. This is where you want to be. And then, just to let you know, that money will also come back to help our ministry. Thanks for all you do, and we want to help you as well. If you have a prayer concern or prayer need, we will help pray over those. All you have to do is send that to us at our email address, floribama at centralonline.tv, and we will be in prayer with you and for you. Thank you so much for tuning in. Enjoy today's service. All right, I do have a, a little gift for the y'all that shout your hands up about uh, uh, being first time here. If you're this, this is your very first time here uh, to the church, and you would like to tell me that you are from the furthest away than everyone else, if that's you know, with my poor geography skills, if I think you're farther, I'm going to give you a shirt today. All right, so a little contest. You can only participate if this is your first time here. All right. All right? Yep. Got it. <laughs> Minnesota. You can just yell it out. Minnesota. Where? Who's California? California? All right, there's one. Oh, and he gave me the, yeah, rock on. All right, California. Anyone further? Wisconsin. Yeah, Wisconsin. Wait a minute. No, California. <laughs> Anybody else? Minneapolis is not a winner. <laughs> no, Canada can't win. All right, California, you win. I'll come see you. All right, everybody stand up. All right, give a, a nice 78-degree high five to someone you don't know. You may be seated. I thought it was me. <laughs> Let's try a song now. Uh, it's called Old City Bar. City bar, it's 
never too far from the places that gather the dreams that have been in the safety of night with its old neon lights beckons to strangers they always come in and the snow it was falling neon was calling the music was low and the night christmas eve here was the danger that even with strangers inside of the night it's easier to believe child came inside but no one in the bar had seen there before and he asked did you know that outside in the snow someone was lost standing outside the door and the bartender gazed through the smoke and the haze through the window and ice the corner street light where they're standing alone by a broken payphone was a girl the child said could no longer go home and the snow it was falling the neon was calling the bartender turned and said not that i care but how would you know this the child said i've noticed if one could be home they'd be already there Tender came out from behind the bar and all of his life he was never that far he did something else that he thought no one saw when he took all the cash from the register draw then he followed the child to the girl across the street and he watched from the bar as they started to speak then he called for a cab and he said jfk put the girl in the cab and the cab drove away see in his hand the cash was all gone from the light that he wished upon if you want to arrange it this world you can change it if we could somehow make this christmas thing last without helping a neighbor or even a stranger to know who needs help you need only to ask If you want to arrange it This world we can change it If somehow we could make this Christmas thing last by helping a neighbor or even a stranger to know who needs help you know only to ask I learned that from Brother Dan there. He, he requested that song, so. This next one, it's called Joy to the World. Jeremiah was a bullfrog. He was a good friend of mine. Jesus understood every word he said, and it turned muddy water to wine. It's Jesus 
made some mighty fine wine Singing joy to the world, yeah All the boys and girls now Joy to the fishes in the deep blue sea He's a righteous rider and a rainbow flyer a Straight shooting son of a gun I said a straight shooting son of a gun Singing joy to the world Yeah, all the boys and girls now Joy to the fishes in the deep blue sea Joy to you and me Come on, Mike Sandman. Yeah! <laughs> well, I know you're in a good mood now, so I'm not even going to ask how you're doing. <laughs> well, Merry Christmas, everybody. <laughs> yeah, doesn't it feel good? Christmas time. I love it. So I want to welcome you all. My name is Dan. I'm the pastor here. And I want to testify, haven't used that word in a while, but uh, I'm just grateful I'm here because I got a text this morning from dear old dad up in Duluth, Minnesota. <laughs> so I'm just grateful to be here. It was, uh, it is um, 38 below zero up there. So I said, hey, do you realize it is, it is 110 degrees colder there than it is here? I, I didn't, when I was texting, I thought, that can't be right. I didn't do so good in math, but so I did some, yeah, 110 degrees colder there than it is here. Thank you, Lord, for bringing us down here. <laughs> oh, man, are you kidding me? I told him it's not actually illegal to move out of the state. You can still do it. I was talking to somebody this morning. I thought, who in the world, back however many years ago, hundreds of years ago, thought that was a good place to settle? <laughs> when that first winter came, I'd have been like, we are out of here, man. <laughs> oh, man. Beautiful, though. I don't miss it. But... If this is your very first week here, or it's been a while since you've been here, we've been in a series that we're calling Christmas Miracles. How many of you guys have been in on a little bit of the Christmas Miracles conversations? Yeah, and miracles are an interesting 
topic to discuss for a lot of reasons. Some of the reasons may be some of us are skeptical of miracles. It was great for, you know, back in the day during Jesus' time or even further back than that, but do miracles really still happen? What is really a miracle? How would you define a miracle? Another reason why people may be skeptical of miracles is because you may have been around someone who asked God for a miracle or you may have asked God for a miracle yourself and it seemed as if what you asked for did not happen the way you wanted it to happen. So miracles in general, are a, a, it's an interesting topic. And then you hear about miracles and they sound really fishy. You know what I'm talking about? Just real fishy and very weird sometimes. And so I understand that miracles can be a bizarre conversation and even a little bit kind of a... Uh, um, um, you don't want to talk about it because of an experience that you may have had. And so right at the beginning of this series, I said a couple things. The first thing is this. The first thing is what I'm going to talk about over the, over the last couple weeks and this week, it's impossible to cover the entire topic of miracles, the entire topic of miracles, which is probably good news because that then forces us as intelligent people to go home and do a little digging and research and maybe even open our Bibles to read maybe some of the stuff's going on. And I hear all the time, man, I wouldn't even know where to start. That's, a, that's the great age that we live in, the age of Google. Just Google it, man. Bible miracles, right? Or modern day miracles. And there will be account after account after account of what miracles have happened, what miracles took place years and years and years ago. And so it would be impossible for you to come, even if you were here every week, for us to talk about it all. The second thing I said was this. Even if we were to talk about as much as we possibly could, and we would take um, you know, months to do it, you would still walk away with some questions and maybe even some doubts about something I said or some verse in the Bible. And I want to put all of your minds at ease for just a minute. It's okay to have questions. It's okay to wrestle with interesting topics in the Bible. It's okay to have doubts. I would argue this. It's really hard to have strong faith unless at some point you've had a little doubt to overcome. God can handle all of your doubts, all of your questions, all of your unbeliefs. He can handle it. It doesn't offend him. It doesn't make him angry with you. It doesn't make you less of a Christian to have some doubts. Be okay with it. But then I would also say, don't just live in that ambiguity. Start to dig for yourself and find out what you really believe about it. Ask some people of like faith. Ask somebody who you think may know something about the Bible to help you answer some of those questions. And then the third thing is this. I, or anybody on our church team, we don't have all the answers about miracles. And so even if you do ask someone, you were to ask me or someone from the church team or somebody who has been a Christ follower for a long, 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 long time, nobody has all the answers to all of your specific questions. And so sometimes the answer you may get is, I don't know. That may be the best answer somebody can give you. And that may frustrate you, but one thing it should do, it should spur you on to studying for yourself. Because you and I both know, if you're a Christ follower, you can't relegate your entire Christian growth, spiritual growth, to what happens here for the one hour that you're hanging out with us, right? It, that you, can't, you can't live that way. In the same way, if you had one 60-minute um, you know, conversation a week with somebody uh, that you just met, you couldn't really build a relationship through that 60 minutes once a week if you came every week, right? So dig for yourself. Now, we've talked about a couple different miracles in the Bible. We've talked about Zechariah and Elizabeth ask God for a miracle. They could not have children. And so they asked God for a son. And the angel appeared to them one day while Zechariah was at work. He worked in the temple and 
he was in the temple, in the church kind of building, and the angel appeared and said, God has heard your prayer, and you're going to have a child. So God worked a miracle in Zechariah and Elizabeth's life. The key to their miracle, however, was not, how, was not uh, Zechariah's job. He worked at the church. The key to Zechariah and Elizabeth's miracle was they were willing to ask God for one. And it would seem that a theme throughout all of Scripture is most all miracles begin with an ask. And sometimes we think what we need from God isn't significant enough to really validate and ask because there's so many I know you guys ever been like that before you're about to ask God something and it was a big deal to you but then you thought about all the other big deals happening in the world and you thought man compared to what other people are going through what I'm going through is nothing so you chose not to ask and here's the logic that we came up with God makes nothing insignificant nothing he's ever made has been insignificant by accident and if God makes everything significant, then he made you, that means you are significant and everything about you is. So even the request that you think is insignificant, God thinks is significant. And so ask, ask. And then last week we talked about this idea that so often we are focused on what isn't happening when we ask God for something. We don't see what is happening. And that we can get so focused on asking God to do something for us that we don't see the miracle that God is working in us. And so here's what I want to do today. I just want to take a minute and go back to week one where we talked about Zechariah and Elizabeth. If you were here, you found out that Zechariah and Elizabeth, when they asked for a child, an angel appeared to them, and the angel actually told them to name him John. John. Now, we stopped right there. If you are a reader of scripture, if you ever read the entire Christmas story, especially in Luke, you would find out that John, common name, was actually John the Baptist. If you're um, not a church person or Bible reading person, John the Baptist was this amazing preacher that prepared the way for Jesus to come. He preached repentance and baptism. And so we're going to pick up the story. We're going to repeat one of the verses that we read from last week just to kind of catch us up. If you brought your program with you, you can open it up. It says this, Don't be afraid, the angel said to Zechariah. God has heard your prayer. Your wife Elizabeth will give you a son, and you will name him John. And then go down. Uh, we're going to jump down to verse 80. John grew, same John. John grew and became strong in spirit and lived in the wilderness until he began his public ministry in Israel. His public ministry was he was a preacher. He was a preacher. He spread the news about the kingdom of God before Jesus ever came on the scene. Matter of fact, we find out a little bit later that Jesus actually went to John to be baptized. So they were alive at the exact same time. Now the next verse says this. It tells you a little bit about John. God sent a man, John the Baptist, out of the book of John, not the same guy, John the Baptist. John, this John, was a disciple of Jesus. Actually, a very, I love how John describes himself in the book of John. If you ever read the book of John, it's a really great way to describe yourself. He describes himself as the one whom Jesus loved. <laughs> he never uses his own name. He's like, yeah, that one disciple, you know, the one that Jesus really loved. Yeah. So different John. God sent a man, John the Baptist, to tell about the light, talking about Jesus, so that everyone might believe because of his testimony. John himself was not the light. He was simply a witness to tell about the light. The one who is the true light, who gives light to everyone, was coming into the world. Talking about Jesus. Now, I want you to think for just a second about this ask that Zachariah and Elizabeth had. They asked God for a son, for a baby. They could not have one, so they asked God to do a miracle in their lives. In this instant, God gave them exactly what they wanted. We talked about last week, it doesn't always work out that way. Sometimes what we ask for comes in different shapes and forms. It doesn't always come how we want it, when we want it, where we want it. 
And it would seem as if God didn't answer it, but really God knows better. And if he would have given us exactly what we wanted, when we wanted, and where we wanted it, it would have caused more problems than we realized. Because God is a good father. He knows better. Now, this miracle happened to be very close to exactly how they asked. But what's interesting to me is their ask was for a child. What they didn't ask God, at least we have no record of them asking God, that one day this miracle that God gives them turns into this amazing preacher, this predecessor to Jesus who shows people the way to get to him that he would be written about and talked about for thousands and thousands of years. See, what Zachariah and Elizabeth did, they asked God to do a miracle in their family. But they had no idea the whole time God was also planning to do a miracle through their family. They were focused on what they needed from God, but God, in his great power, and his being able to see the end, the Bible says the end from the beginning, to be able to see the future, was working a miracle in, physically, in Elizabeth's body, the whole while looking to the future on what that miracle would do for the world around them. And they had no idea that that was coming. They had no clue it was coming. And probably were unbelievably surprised when it did happen. Then John gathers all this fame throughout the entire region. I mean, he became a famous, famous preacher. People would come from all over to see him. That's not even what they prayed for. It wasn't even in their mind. They just wanted a child. God would just give us a child. And God did something in their lives. But then God also did something through their lives, through John. Oftentimes, we can get, you and I, and I can, maybe I won't speak for you, I'll just speak for me. I can get so focused on what I want God to do in my life that I lose perspective of the whole world around me. That maybe God can take what's going on in my life and then use it to affect the lives of other people around me. And that's a great perspective to have for God. God sees all, and I don't see all. And so what I could do is I could chalk it up to the fact, well, I can't see all things like God sees all things. But I don't think you need to see all things to notice that God is doing more than just answering a prayer in your life. I think all we have to do, all you and I have to do, all I need to do is just not look at the whole world, but to look at the world around us. Look at the world around us. There's this very interesting scripture um, that uh, is in the Gospels that Jesus is hanging out with his disciples. And they're going along. And you know, if you've ever read Matthew, Mark, Luke, or John, people were always trying to grab onto Jesus and he was always trying to get away from them, you know? The crowds would come and then he needed to sleep once in a while, you know? And so he'd jump in a boat and head to the other side or it, the Bible says that he'd sneak through the crowd and try to get out of there. The interesting thing that he said to his disciples was this, as you go, preach the gospel, right? As you go. In other words, listen, you can take, well, I was gonna say planes, but at the time boats, but for us, you can take planes to the ends of the earth to preach the gospel, but first, just as you go, Spread the message of the gospel wherever you go. And, and you may one day end up on a plane on the other side of the world, or you may never leave your community. But what Jesus was asking the disciples to do is don't forget that there's a world around you. Don't forget that there are more people on this planet than just you. Because I don't know if you've ever been this way, but I could give you a list of times when I've had this attitude. When you are facing something and you are asking God to do something, whatever that something is, I become very self-absorbed. 
My thoughts get focused on what is going down. Maybe it's some kind of sickness in a family or a financial crisis that you're facing. Or there is something going on. It seems like I get tunnel vision and I have a hard time seeing what's going on around me and all of my energy and my thoughts and my attention goes to whatever it is I really, 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 really need. Especially if it's a severe or a big, big deal, I start to narrow my focus in only on what I need. Now, I can't speak for Zachariah and Elizabeth, but my guess is at least we don't have record of, and the angel doesn't allude to the fact that they prayed for anything other than God to do a miracle in their lives. And so, man, they made it in the Bible, and they still get a little self-focused sometimes. You know what I mean? I get that way. I don't know if you do. But I do know this. All the while that God is working a miracle in you, he's preparing to work a miracle through you. The whole time that you're asking about something for yourself, God has this outside perspective. And he sees the people that you're going to run into or knock over this week while you're Christmas shopping. And there's only two things left, you know? And he understands that you may have family in town, you'll be eating out more than you normally would. Or you may try to be trying to get out of the house more than you normally would. And so you're going to be interacting with people that you may not normally interact with. And the whole thing, in my opinion, in what I think, that God puts us in places on purpose. And God, believe it or not, puts you in communities on purposes and in neighborhoods on purposes. And he also on purpose has neighbors move in next door to you and move out. And he rearranges people's lives on purpose. He puts you in places on purpose. And the places he puts you in, people are also asking God for a miracle too. Someone else is asking the same time you're asking. You're not the only person asking God to do something special in their lives. I got to realize that I'm not the only person on my knees asking God, God, would you please do this in my life because there, there's somebody in my neighborhood saying the same prayer. They may not even be a Christ follower. They're just asking God. And there's somebody at that store that is in need of a miracle and maybe the way God's going to answer their prayer request is by sending you and me to them. See, somewhere right now, someone is in need of something, some physical thing. And this whole time, see, God's been working generosity in your heart and my heart. And then you run into that person. You have no idea that they were in need. But you can become the answer to the prayer that they have been praying. You can become that answer by being generous to that person. You may not even know what's happening. You may not even know that you're being an answer to another person's prayer. Why? Because sometimes we, we, we're just focused on us. We don't realize that, man, man, there's other people asking God for a miracle as well. And in the same way, there are people right now that have loved ones, friends, family members. And they need Christ. And there's somebody back home, maybe hundreds or thousands of miles away from here, saying a prayer for that person. They're saying a prayer, God, would you please send somebody across their path that will share the gospel with them. Somebody across their path that would invite them to church. And you happen to be standing without even realizing it right behind them, waiting for them to get out of line so you can order your coffee. And we don't realize, we didn't even know that it was a setup from the beginning. God has sets us up not only to receive a miracle, but to be a miracle for somebody else. You would not believe how many people have come up to me in the short, like, 16-ish months that we've been here almost every week. Hey, I want you to introduce you to, you know, such, such a person. We've been praying that they would come to church I've been inviting them and inviting them and inviting them. But, and then they'll point to somebody else. But they invited them this week, so they came. Right? 
sometimes it's got to be somebody else. And you and I may be that somebody else that they've been praying for to come across their path. There is somebody right now feeling hopeless in the world around you that you're going to interact with today. And they don't need a handout. And they don't need to be invited to church necessarily. But they need someone to encourage them. Someone to smile. Because here's what I believe. Every smile that you give, every hug that you give, every time you lift someone's uh, groceries from their cart into their car, every time you mow the neighbor's yard, and every time you rake their yard, and every time you check their mail form, every time you do something out of the ordinary for somebody that's not expecting it or that is in need of it, but they just won't ask, you have become a miracle for somebody else. And oftentimes, the reason why people miss their miracle is because we get so focused on ourselves. God was trying to get our attention the whole time to go be a miracle for somebody, and we just pass it off because I've got other things to do. I'm busy, and I've got a whole life to live. And listen, I get it. You're busy. I'm busy. We're busy. But God is trying to set us up to answer people's prayers. We might not even realize it's happening. Most of the time, I don't realize it's happening. You may not realize it's happening, but it's being available because somewhere, somebody's asking God for a miracle too. And God is going to answer that prayer through you, through me. All we have to do is act to do something. I don't, I don't know what the situation will call for, but it's going to be something. It's going to be doing something. And I think it's great, the amazing stories in the Bible about manna falling from heaven, I think those are great stories. I think it was amazing, it was a miracle, uh, you know, supernatural, that Jesus uh, went to the lake and he fished out a fish and there was a coin in it and he paid taxes with that coin. How sweet would that be? Tax season's coming, you know what I'm saying? So th those are all amazing. Elijah was starving and God sent birds with bread to, you know, feed Elijah and they needed water out in the desert and Moses hit the rock and water came out of the rock. All those miracles are amazing. But if you read the Bible, they're, they're few and far between. They're few and far between. Most of the time, God used everyday, ordinary people like me and you to perform miracles in other people's lives. Yeah. All we have to do is something. That's all. Just something. The thought pops in your head, take action. If the thought never pops in your head, you need some prayer. No. But, <laughs> but oftentimes, oftentimes what it is, it's really not, it's really, really not that hard to see. I think God makes it so obvious, and yet I miss it because I'm not up looking around. I'm focused on myself. I don't know if you could ever focus on yourself, but I do. I do, especially when things are tough and you need a miracle. See, God, I believe with all of my heart, will do a miracle in your life if you ask him. But he also wants to do a miracle through your life because someone else is asking too. Someone else is asking. I want to read uh, one last time the definition of miracle. The definition of miracle. A miracle... I mean, we, we said it the first week, isn't something spectacular. The word spectacular is not in the definition of miracle. It's when the divine God intercedes in doing something extraordinary in the lives of humans. Extraordinary, not spectacular, just extraordinary. We all can do something a little extraordinary. I can't really do anything spectacular. I'm just going to tell you. I don't have a lot of spectacular qualities, but I can do something out of the ordinary, a little extraordinary, all the while not realizing I'm becoming the answer, the miracle for somebody else's prayer. Jeff just a moment ago sang that song, um, 
called Old City Bar. There's a line that he's saying twice in it, and I just want to kind of repeat those words to you. It says this, if you want to arrange it, this world, you can change it. If somehow we could make this Christmas thing last by helping a neighbor or even a stranger. To know who needs help, you need only to ask. And you and I are interacting with neighbors and strangers every day. And see, the whole time you've been asking for a miracle, they have too. Every time you've got a prayer request, they've got a prayer request to God. And in the same way God's orchestrating your miracle to be answered, God may be using you to orchestrate their miracle to be answered as well. God not only wants to work a miracle in your life, he wants to work a miracle through your life. And it just causes us to look up and to be aware and to take action to do something, to do something extraordinary. Let me say a prayer with you if that's okay. Well, Father, I am humbled by all the times that I've thrown out a prayer to you. And even though sometimes it doesn't come back to me exactly how I wanted it, I know that you're a good father and that you hear my prayers. Lord, I thank you that you're a God that's near us and far away, somewhere else. That you're not turning a deaf ears to our prayers. God, my prayer as we wrap up this series is this, that we would not only be focused on what we need you to do in our lives, but that we would make ourselves available, that you would do something through our lives. That every neighbor and every stranger, we would take notice and that we would take action and do something to be an answer to their prayer. God, I pray that you would give us eyes to see the needs of the people around us. May we be the miracle in somebody else's life this year. We pray these things in Christ's name. Amen. I'm going to tell you one way, and I, I won't go into the whole story, but last year, I had someone walk up. Our, our invites looked a little bit different than this, and uh, they came up to me crying after our Christmas Eve service. And uh, with, I'll use their words, because we all know it was Christ that changed their life. But they came up saying how their life had been changed sitting in that service, listening to the music, and when we opened up God's Word and taught it. She held up a little invite, and she said, this card changed my life. I knew what she meant right away. I knew that there was nothing special about this little piece of paper, but somebody, I didn't even ask her where, gave it to her, she saw it somewhere, and she grabbed it, and she came and she heard the gospel. You know what a great way to be someone's miracle this year? Is grab you a stack of these and get them to everybody you know. Get them to everybody you know. All right, thank you, Dan. Thank you. Yeah, man. All right. Hey, our first time guests, if you stop by our info tables, we have a little gift for you. Everyone should stop by and get a stack of invite cards. Hey, um, I did want to point this out real quick. This is, and next this Sunday will be our last service of 2016. It's been an amazing year with Dan up here. Over 42,000 people have come through this service. It's an amazing thing. It is. We end, we end this every week with the same thing, but it's always true. In Romans 8, God tells us that if God is for us, who, who can, can be against us? See you next week or Christmas Eve. Some glad morning when this life is over, I'll fly away to a land on God's celestial shore. I'll fly away.
shadows of the star have gone. I fly away like a bird from prison bars and foam. I fly away. Oh, I fly away. Oh, glory. I fly away. When I die, hallelujah, by and by.